Right, continuing our tale of nematodes, uh, just a little bit on uh, nematode diversity. We'll be working through the various nematode groups in the weeks to come. Uh, here we've got some plant parasitic nematodes. Uh, that's an aerial photo of a soybean field under attack by nematodes in the genus Heterodera, and you can see the dead patches. Uh, this is the kind of thing that people that grow uh, sod grass uh, have to worry about. And I think I mentioned I had a student who used to work on one of our golf courses in town uh, who was constantly battling the scourge of nematodes. Animal parasitic nematodes aren't much fun either. Brace yourselves. Uh, because that's a piece of human intestine that's been removed by emergency surgery. Uh, Ascaris is the genus of the human intestinal roundworm, and aside from causing poor absorption of food, um, if they get numerous enough, they can physically block the gut, and that is a dire medical emergency. Um, it doesn't help matters that they're very vigorous, and they have been known to not only crawl uh, out of the gut through the anus, but out of the gut through the stomach and sometimes out of the mouth or nose. Uh, you do not want to get human intestinal roundworm if you can possibly avoid it. Uh, somewhat more beneficial from a human perspective are the nematodes that are parasites of insects. Uh, we'll look at these in more detail coming up, but uh, insect parasitic nematodes in the family Myrmithidae uh, have this lovely way of growing inside uh, insect abdomens and then bursting out. Uh, so you can see the remains of a fire ant uh, right there um, that has broken open and released a number of Myrmithid nematodes. Um, I'm assuming you don't have a great deal of sympathy for fire ants growing up where you probably did. And nematodes in the genus Heterorhabdis are actually raised commercially. Uh, you can buy them. Uh, you can buy bags of nematode eggs um, in order to control garden and agricultural insect pests. Uh, they're a part of what's called integrated pest management, which basically means that you don't just, you know, bomb your gardens or your fields with pesticides, but you use a mixture of anti-pest strategies, uh, everything from raising resistant varieties of crops uh, to careful use of pesticides. Um, to biological control, like releasing predatory insects or parasitic insects or parasitic nematodes, and trying to use multiple strategies so you're not too reliant on chemical strategies. And we'll cover heterorhabditis uh, coming up because they do something really weird. The, what I'll show you now is a free-living nematode. Uh, tends to live in soil and uh, especially compost. Uh, this is Cenorhabditis elegans. And even though it's not a parasite, it's worth looking at uh, because a gent named Sidney Brenner uh, started using C. elegans to look at developmental genetics in 1965. And after only almost 40 years of work, he shared the Nobel Prize for it. So that's what you can do uh, if you're willing to work on this for 40 years really hard. Maybe you'll get a Nobel Prize as well. And the neat thing about C. elegans is that it's got cell lineage constancy, meaning that uh, every adult is made of a known number of cells, 959, uh, there's 131 that are produced uh, but that die during development by apoptosis, which is the product, a, a process of orderly cell death. And the position of every one of those cells has been mapped. 
and we know exactly where every one of those cells comes from. Uh, the complete genome of C. elegans was sequenced in 1998, and what this lets us do is look at, at a very nuts and bolts level, the question of how you get from a fertilized egg to a complex body. Um, what does mutating a particular gene do to the pattern of uh, development, uh, to the timing of cell division, uh, to the structures that you get? Uh, so that happens to be a very small part of the C. elegans lineage. On the left, you can see hours, or sorry, minutes. That's number of minutes from fertilization. Uh, every one of those branches is a cell division event. Um, the, uh, every one of those uh, lines is the length of time that a cell is around, and those X's represent cells that die uh, by programmed cell division, apoptosis. And it took a small army of, I presume, mostly grad students staring down microscope barrels until they lost their minds to map cell division at this kind of level. But the location of every cell has been mapped from the earliest divisions all the way to the adult. Uh, in that image, every nucleus has been stained with a fluorescent stain. And again, knowing C. elegans in this kind of detail, you can ask and answer some very basic questions as to how your genes really work to create an adult anatomy and what sort of things happen uh, if they mutate. And that's knowledge that's applicable across the animal kingdom. In the next one, we'll start looking at, anim at uh, nematode diversity, uh, specifically of the parasites, and I'll have some more gross pictures for you.